Panorama TV presents How They Do That, where we explore the world of professional photographers and share their techniques with you. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Welcome to this week's episode of How'd They Do That. On today's show, we're talking to Tamar Levine. Tamar is a Los Angeles-based fashion, portrait, and fine art photographer. Tamar regularly shoots for magazines, she shoots ad campaigns, as well as her own fine art photography. I caught up with Tamar in Los Angeles, so here's our conversation all about her work. Okay, well, Tamar, thank you so much for letting us come hang out here in Hollywood. I love this, um, in this gorgeous backyard. Thank so you. you've been shooting for about five years. Mm -hmm. Um, and a lot of your work is, uh, well describe it to us, who are your clients, what are you shooting and what do you love to do? Um, my clients are kind of a mix of everyone. I do a lot of editorials for magazines, a lot of kind of underground fashion magazines, um, some local magazines around here in LA. I do a lot of clothing designers and a lot of, I mean just kind of whatever I, I can get, but right. my love is um, narrative, fine art and fashion. And so. Uh, for those people that are wanting to do that, how did you get from going to school to being a successful photographer in Hollywood? How does that happen? <laughs> I don't know if I would call myself successful, but it's... Um, <laughs> we call you successful. Thank you. Um, yeah, I don't know. I Right after I uh, graduated from Art Center, I packed up and moved everything to New York and um, just kind of shot stuff for about a year um, and then moved back when I wasn't really, it wasn't really giving me the outcome that I wanted. So then I came back to LA and I guess it was just kind of, um, you know, a lot of, I guess, connections that you don't even think you have. Right. And um, From the work in New York? From New York, from high school friends, from, I mean, really connections from just, I mean, you know, down, down, right. way deep into the ground, but um, a lot of connections, and I also just email people constantly, like that's mm -hmm. kind of 90% of my job is just emailing people and calling and showing my portfolio. Do you do events and shaking hands and actually face-to-face -face time? Um, I'm, I really am not very into networking, I mean, I, I go out a lot, so okay. I'll, you know, I'll talk to people then, but I'm, I really... I actually really hate talking about my work and I hate like, you know, like the whole schmoozing thing. Well, thanks stuff. for joining so, us today. No, yeah, okay. no problem. But I hate the whole schmoozing thing and networking yeah. thing. So, I mean, I guess maybe subconsciously I do, but it's it's really more, um, you know, cold emails and stuff like that. And that's, that's surprising. Most people uh, have a difficult time being seen. And so that speaks to the quality of your work. Oh, that, thank you. You know, that it's it's strong enough that people can view that. I mean, it's, like, it's kind of like, you know, these people get so many emails every day, so it's really kind of a, um, it, like, if I'm lucky, if they happen to, mm -hmm. you know, see my email, I'll get a response. But you, I really found that I just have to keep emailing, you know, and, and right. just you and know, you go. keep calling. And One of the things I really like about your work, and there's a ton of it that I like. Thank you. Um, <laughs> we just had a lot of fun looking through your, your stuff. Um, some of it, it looks, to me, like large format, uh, camera because it's a very shallow depth of field. It's got this sort of ethereal look and right. a little vignetting. But you don't shoot large format and you don't no. shoot film. I would love to, but I mean, I do. I do do a ton of Photoshop, so I think it would just be. Re I'm trying to kind of, you know, a, yeah. a lot of it is just saving costs, pretty much. But right. I do love film, and I kind of, you know, I learned on large format and film. But um, yeah, I I do different things. I'll put Vaseline over my lens. I'll mm -hmm. put nylons with p little holes in them over my lens. And so that's like the old '60s and '70s kind of techniques. Yeah, I just I mean I just kind of have fun and I improvise with that kind of stuff. And then as I said, I do love Photoshop. So um, I'll I really do spend a lot of time. Like the the vignetting is is either through the Vaseline or if I haven't gotten the look that I've achieved, I'll do it through Photoshop as well. And the camera you shoot with is a 5D, is that correct? Yeah, 5D Mark II. Mm -hmm. Tell us about your, um, your, so it's the camera, the 5D Mark II, and what lenses do you choose normally when you're shooting? Um, I love the 50, the 50 millimeter lens is like my my absolute favorite lens. It's like a $100 lens. Right, I it's don't the plastic even, fantastic. Yeah, I don't even it. use the L-series lens, and it's, I think it 
what is it, 1.8 or yeah, 1.8? Or yeah, so 1.8 or 1.4 or something like that. Yeah, so it, it, it does get pretty wide open, so I do tend to shoot with a very shallow depth of field because mm -hmm. I really like the, um, the kind of like out of focus, you know, ethereal look. So I'll do that when I... Um, when I shoot advertising or commercial, I'll, I'll rent the L series lenses. But for all the fashion stuff, it's pretty much that 50 millimeter. And, and your lighting, um, so you don't have a studio, is that correct? Right. So yeah. You're all rental studios or location shooting? Yeah, I mean, for the most part, I shoot on location. Yeah. And how do you light? Um, I I usually use Pro Photos. I'll use the Seven Bs um, location lighting and. That's that's when I'm on location in the studio. I'll use you know mostly pro photo. To be honest, like I think that, like I have a tendency to be very minimal with my lighting. I I think lighting is incredibly important, but I tend to kind of light from dark rather than from light. You know, from from ah. from from down. I start darker and I go lighter as opposed to kind of overly lighting things, you know, because I so really walk think us through that, that. Like when you're exposing, you actually underexpose intentionally and then add highlights as you go? Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll expose for the ambient light first mm -hmm. and then I'll kind of just pop lighting, you know, where I need it. I, I always, unless I'm in a studio, I pretty much always use a mix of ambient and, um, and my strobes as well. So one of the um, top questions that we get is how do you do that? How do you mix ambient light with strobes? And we've we've done some instruction, but what's your uh, what's your process for of metering, getting your light set, and matching your strobes to your ambient? Light? Do you have any <laughs> secrets for this us? This is <laughs> this is probably really bad to say, but I I tend to not use a light meter. <laughs> I <laughs> um, I if I'm doing commercial jobs, my assistants will use light meters, but I don't even own a light meter. They'll they'll bring their own. Oh my god. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I. So I don't know, like I, I'm very visual, so I'll, I'll take a photo without any lighting and then I'll, I kind of, I kind of, I guess I have my process dialed in, like I always, I really like the kind of Rembrandt light with like the high, triangle. yeah, yeah. highlight at an angle and then like a hair light or fill or something like that. So I'll kind of just start with a basic setup like that and um, just start really low with the power, then just kind of go, you know, inch it in. more. I mean, I'm shooting digital, so it's not like I'm wasting film. There are a lot of photographers that don't use light meters. Joel Grimes um, has a whole workshop on <laughs> you know, using his. So do you use a histogram to figure out if you're exposed yes, correctly? Yes, yes, yeah. In, um, yeah, definitely. I, I always use my histogram. I always make sure that I have, you know, information, my whites and my blacks. And mm -hmm. even when I'm retouching, I, I make sure to keep that. Something is there. Okay, yeah. I'll have to hang out with you for a day and show you. Like the 750, you'll never go back. You're like, oh my gosh, look what I can do. Uh, it's really fun. Um, okay, so uh, that's sort of how you, you shoot. Tell us a little bit about the kind of work that you, you love to shoot and why you became a photographer. Um, I know that's a huge question, but so many people yeah. are like, you know, why do you do what you do and what sets you apart? I found a lot of times is, is answering that question, you know, why are you doing this? So do you have insights for us? Um, Okay, well, I, I became, a, I guess I've been shooting since I was about 13 years old. Um, my, both of my parents are artists, and my mom is a fine artist. My dad is, um, he did avant-garde film, so I kind of wanted to stay in the art world, but not, you know, completely follow in one of their footsteps. So, I don't know, my dad gave me the, um, his old Nikon F1 when I was 13 years old, and I, I just started shooting, and I love it. I've been... Um, I guess my favorite thing about photography is is kind of creating a narrative and kind of expressing a whole world in just one still image or a series of images. That's that's definitely my favorite thing. About when you're it. doing that, let's say for a, a a magazine editorial or something, you have to work with art directors. You have to work with uh, other people in mm -hmm. a collaborative way. How how do you go about that? Do you come with the ideas? Do you listen to ideas? Is it um, that really, really depends on the client. Like, I, I mean, I guess my favorite thing to do is um, fashion editorial because generally they'll tell me kind of the look that they're going for and I'll, I'll just come to them with, you know, some crazy stories and see mm -hmm. if they are into any of them. Um, so that's kind of what happens with the magazine is I'll pitch a story and they'll, you know, agree with it kind of. Or say, uh. yeah, or say, you know, figure out a new one or whatever. Um, for the advertising stuff with an art director, they'll, I mean, that's, that's basically 
them telling me exactly what they want and me just kind of making it happen. So right. it really, really depends on the client. It can be from me coming up with the entire idea, them saying, cool, awesome, go for it. And it could be, you know, as strict as them saying, this is exactly what we want, you know, yeah, make, make it happen. Yeah. And that's normally the kind of stuff I'm doing, which is sometimes not so fun yeah you don't get to shoot what you want you have to shoot what they are not only what they want but what they're seeing in their brain that they not necessarily can show you yeah exactly and that's i mean i love doing that but obviously i i I love creating narratives so tell us a little bit about how you work with your uh, models and when you're on location because some of the things that we've seen are pretty interesting you've got like a girl standing on a fence behind a horse yeah (laughs) and you know just some unusual things like that so are those things that you come with uh, prepared or is that spontaneous and if so how do you say stand on the fence behind the horse <laughs> um definitely not premeditated at all I, I definitely I mean I guess the most important thing when I think of the idea is the location especially for these editorial jobs like you just don't have a budget for locations so a lot of it will kind of I'll find a cool location and kind of create a story around that hmm. um, so, I don't know. Well, for example, for the, the photo um, with the horse, I thought of the idea to just do this. Th- that was for YRB magazine. And they wanted to do kind of urban fashion. But since I don't normally shoot, like, I, I guess most of my editorials have kind of a timeless feel because I'm not really into, like, super modern yeah. fashion. So, um the for swatch that commercial yeah so exactly <laughs> yeah nice. so i like stuff that could kind of fit in any decade right. you know so um for that one they they said you know we want really urban you know new york street fashion so i said okay well maybe i'll soften that up a little bit with shooting in a stable so i kind of i mean i didn't re- I, I guess for that one i didn't really have any ideas i just kind of i went there i found two models i went there and um I kind of start more simple, like I'll start with kind of straight on portraits um, where the models really don't have to do that much to, you know, start getting comfortable and towards the middle of the shoot we're all having fun and I'll say, hey, hop on the fence, you know, and (laughs) and they'll do it. So it's it's really, um, you know, you kind of have to get a feel of what the models are comfortable with and, you know, I won't do that with every model. Perfect. Okay. And then um, animals. So besides horses, have you worked with animals? Um, I have. I've worked with, let's see, what have I worked with? I've worked with a lot of cats and dogs. I really love animals in photo shoots, mm-hmm. and I hope someday to be able to, you know, afford for some editorial shoot just tons and tons There's of animals. A couple and of elephants. And yeah, <laughs> I mean, I, I just love how animals look in photo shoots, so. Yeah, we tend to have a dog in ours all the time, but that's because yeah. he's our dog and he's yeah, always in the studio. My, <laughs> my, dog, my dog has been in like so many of my shoots. I mean, even some of my commercial shoots where we hadn't planned on using mm-hmm. a dog, she'll just stand up. So I think that's that, awesome. yeah, I love working with animals. Great. Well, thanks so much for hanging out with us today and here in sunny, almost a little chilly Yeah, it's kind of cold today. (laughs) Awesome. Thanks again. Cool. Thank you very much. You bet. Well, to see more of Tamara's work, just visit her website. It's tamaralevine.com. And to see more how they do that episodes, just go to the Adorama Learning Center where you see every single episode that we've shot. Or you can subscribe to our YouTube channel or subscribe on iTunes. Well, thanks for joining me. I'll see you again next week. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue.